early in grade school, I struggled with a lot of developmental delays. And some people were even calling them learning disabilities because I had significant problems with reading, writing, math. And I even had problems with my speech. My language just didn't come out right. I was regularly pulled out of school for speech therapy. And the only thing that kept me moving forward from grade to grade was the fact that I could, in fact, demonstrate I was learning under the right conditions. Now, I was really fortunate. I had great parents who were great advocates for me. They, they were able to work with the schools, the teachers, to create these right conditions where, I, in fact, I could demonstrate that I was learning. The whole idea was that as long as I could continue moving forward, getting the right help, that eventually my brain would just sort of sort itself out, fix itself. And that sometimes happens, but it didn't happen for me in that way, at least not in the way that you know, everybody hoped. What happened with me is that I continued to struggle year after year. And one day my parents decided that they were going to take me to get a neuropsych evaluation. They put EEGs on my head. I was a young boy. And I'll tell you, I'll never forget that day. Not because it was a little traumatizing for being poked and prodded and having all these tests, but I remember that day because of what the doctors said about me to my parents when the testing was complete. They said that all the areas of my brain were working normal. All the individual parts were normal. They even said, actually, that one part of my brain, the creative side, seemed to be incredibly vibrant and active. But the problem, as they saw it, was significant communication gaps in my brain. In other words, all the individual parts weren't talking to each other. Now, after that day, everything changed. Because for me and my parents, this was a good prognosis. The problem was simple. The solution was simple, rather. It was a communication problem. All we had to do was teach my brain to work as a unit instead of all these individual parts. So after that diagnosis, my parents started doing some research. And they began engaging me in a whole bunch of intellectual activities, educational activities, in hope to close that communication gap in my brain. And you know what? Bit by bit, it started to work until one day, I had what can only be described as a quantum leap in improvement. It was like somebody reached in my brain and flicked a switch, and suddenly my brain was fully connected. I began to succeed at just about anything I put my mind to. It was amazing. Now, my parents will tell you, I didn't always get good grades, <laughs> you know, and they bugged me about that for a long time. But anything that I focused and attended to, I learned. You know, I didn't understand exactly why at the time what my parents did for me worked and why it worked. Right? And I don't think they did either, really. But I did understand this. It was the work they did with my brain and my mind that really saved me from a life that could have went very differently. Right? And it installed a passion inside me that drives me to this day. And that passion is understanding the brain and helping people that struggle. By the time I finished grade 7, I was already learning hypnosis. And I went on to become a clinical hypnotherapist. By the time I reached my 16th birthday, I had already become one of the world's youngest practitioners in neurolinguistic programming. And I've never stopped. I've never stopped. About 14 years ago, I came across a technology that absolutely grabbed my attention. It was called brainwave entrainment technology. Brainwave entrainment technology it grabbed my attention because the research was just incredible. They were saying that it could help with things like stress, fear, anxiety, pain relief, improve memory, improve intellectual performance. You can see why it caught my interest, right? You know, I was very excited. But the more I read about this technology, the more it started to read like science fiction to me. I mean, one doctor was saying that he was able to raise the IQ of intellectually deficient children by 17 points in one year by using what amounts to is specialized sound frequencies and specialized light frequencies. You know, I said to myself, this has got to be a joke. I mean, how is that even possible? How can you increase an IQ with what amounts to his light and sound? I just couldn't wrap my head around it. But let me assure you, brainwave entrainment is not a joke, and it is very real. In fact, it is very powerful. What I want to do is share with you just a fraction of the clinical peer-reviewed research that shows how powerful this technology really can be. In one study, we had an average of 33% increase in intellectual functioning. Right, among children with ADHD in five categories, measured by the WS, uh, WISC3. Right? What they did is they took 30 students suffering from ADHD. They gave them the test. Then they subjected them to six weeks of brainwave entrainment. They gave them two sessions twice a week. 
And this is the result they got. Absolutely amazing. Another study, 81% improvement on the freedom from distractibility scale from the, the same WISC3. The control group, no results whatsoever. Very, I mean, this is only just a, a, a fraction of the great research that's out there. And even though I was faced with all this research, I still couldn't wrap my head around it. You know, how is this working? So I went out and I purchased what would be the first of many EEG systems. And I strapped it on my own head again, right? This time voluntarily. And I bought up all kinds of audio brainwave entrainment and started to test it on myself. Sure enough, I got intellectual improvements in ways that I couldn't even think to expect. It literally blew my mind. The more I worked with this technology, the more I couldn't shake the feeling that there was a massive amount of untapped potential in this technology. And so what I decided to do is to create my own audio brainwave entrainment with the whole idea and the commitment that I was gonna find this untapped potential. And so month after month, year after year, I worked with this technology, making it better and better and better. And I was very successful at it. I have been very successful at it, so much so that I've made it my living. I quitted a, I had a job, a golden handcuff job. I don't know if you ever had one of those, the ones where you, you just stay for the money. But I was able to get rid of that and do this full time and play with this technology. Now, it's, it's been such an amazing journey in my life to use this technology and, and bring about so many great and amazing changes in people. And, but over the years, I still couldn't find what I thought was this massive amount of untapped potential until about a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, I was taking a course from a world-renowned professor in brain science. And as she was talking about you know, the, the intricacies, intricacies of the eyes and the ears and how, they, how it works with the brain to process and encode light and sound, I had the absolute biggest aha moment of my entire life. And see the exact reason why I'm here today. Now, before I tell you about that aha moment and the technology that came from it, I want to give you a little bit more background on brainwave entrainment technology. Brainwave entrainment partially came into existence because of something called a frequency following response. And a frequency following response is the brain, is the brainwave activity in our brains will sync up and follow external frequencies, you know, usually light and sound, that are similar to our own. So this is how it works. If I were to strap an EEG on one of your heads and I would, uh, let's say, bring you to, how about somewhere warm, right? We'll go, we'll go somewhere warm today on an ocean side and we'll sit you on a rock and we'll eliminate all the distractions. And I'll have you just focus in on the sound of the waves coming in and out, the frequency of the waves coming in and out of shore. And as you continue to focus on that sound, relaxing, in about an hour, what we would see from your brainwave activity is that a large portion of your brainwave activity would eventually sync up and match the rate and speed, the sound of those waves coming in and out. And once your brain was synced to it, if for some reason the speed of those waves were just to slow down, your brain would follow. And if for some reason the speed of those waves would speed up, your brain would quickly follow. That is the frequency following response. And what brainwave entrainment does is it creates these specialized frequencies, sound and light frequencies that are similar to your own in efforts to shift and move your electrical activity. Why would you want to do that? Well, people have been studying electrical activity, brainwaves, EEGs for about 100 years. And I'll tell you, uh, we know a couple of really important things. Number one, right? everything you think, feel, or experience in the world is intimately tied to the electrical activity in your brain. It, every, everything from the simplest to the most complex process leaves an electrical footprint. We also know this, brainwave activity across one person to the next is remarkably consistent, right? When we're asleep, our brainwave activity looks one way. When we're awake, it looks another way. When we're angry, sad, angry, you know, frustrated, overwhelmed, it looks one way. And when we're happy and in love, it looks another. When we're performing at the peak of our mental capacity, it looks another way. And it's this consistency that got neuroscientists so excited about this because on one hand, we have a technology that can shift the electrical activity in the brain. And on the other hand, we have a roadmap that's been being built for 100 years with ever-increasing precision 
that teaches us how to use this technology in a way to create some of those amazing results that we just took a look at a few moments ago. Now, when I had that big aha moment, this is what I realized. Even though this technology is clinically proven to work and it produces amazing results, it became clear to me that it was tragically underpowered. It's tragically underpowered because it doesn't take advantage of the power of our visual system and our auditory system. Here's a great example. See, all the light that comes into your eyes is roughly projected into 40% of the cortex of the brain. That's a big chunk of the brain, right? And there's a lot of processing power there. But let me ask you a question. How much meaning do you think flashes of light has to your brain? Any? Probably very little, right? Well, you're right. It doesn't have very much meaning to the brain. It does very little to rev up that massive powerhouse of the visual system to get it rolling, to get it excited. But let me tell you what does. Simple shapes, complex shapes, changing color and interacting with each other in space. Movement, objects moving around, forcing you to use your depth perception to make sense of what you're seeing. That excites the visual system, that revs it up. It expands the electrical activity and increases blood flow. Same with the auditory system, right? Tones, sounds, does it carry very much meaning? Well, depending on what they are, they could. But for the most part, they don't. They do not take advantage of the massive power of your auditory system. See, one of the primary functions of your auditory system is something called sound localization. That's that thing that allows you to understand where sound is coming from, how it's moving in space, and its relationship to you. That's an intense mathematical process, by the way. Right? I know there's some people here that can do it easily, but I'll tell you, I've tried it. It's a form of triangulation. I don't like it. It's hard, right, as far as I'm concerned. But your brain does it quickly and easily. Tones, da, 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 things like that, do little to engage that part of your brain. Very little. So this is what I did. I took all this information, I took these clinically proven flashes of light, and I put them into simple and complex shape that change color and form and they move about on screen. Right? I took these audit auditory patterns, clinically proven to work, and I put them in these rich 3D landscapes that move about in all these three-dimensional ways. Holophonically, they move about, challenging your brain to use that process of sound localization many times a second. This is what happens when that occurs, by the way. It forces your brain to bounce signals back and forth between the left and right side of your brain. It also encourages blood flow to expand in your brain, which has a lot of really benefit, <laughs> a lot of great benefits. I put those two technologies together, and I call it passive brain fitness. Tagline, you're smarter than you think. That's kind of a play on words, right? But hope Scotiabank doesn't mind, you know? But uh, what, what this technology does is it exercises the brain passively. The reason why I call it passive brain fitness, aside from putting on a video and putting on some earphones, it's 100% passive. All you got to do is experience the technology. The brain fitness part, well, that's easy because what happens to the brain when you use this technology is very similar to what happens when you exercise a muscle, like your bicep. When you exercise that muscle, what's going on? Well, the blood flow increases in that muscle and the electrical activity increases in that muscle. But not just in that muscle, it happens in the surrounding muscles, the supporting muscles, and to a lesser extent, you know, other areas of your body. This is what happens in your brain as you use this technology. The other bonus part of this is that it does not require a frequency following response in order to shift the activity in the brain. That's a big deal because you don't have to wait 30, 40, an hour before you can begin to shift the electrical activity in the brain. We can, get, we can do a better job than brainwave entrainment ever could in seven to 10 minutes, right? This means that you can increase your mental performance on the fly anywhere you go. You put it on your cell phone if you want, right? That's fantastic. So, let me share with you right now a real client. Complained of stress and anxiety, fear and anxiety. Brought her into my office. I took a, a baseline. This is an EEG reading, and it's a simple one, so it's easier to look at. And we took a baseline reading. This is her brainwave activity. Inside that square there, it looks great. After she's relaxing, it looks wonderful. Keep your attention on the attention, meditation, and zone state meters, OK? Now, after she was relaxed a little bit, we asked her to actively read something. Okay, her brain is responding as it should, right? All the, the meters are going up, okay? Then what we did is we induced fear and anxiety. Can you see the difference, right? Look at those brain waves. They're all over the place. And look at the attention, meditation, zone state meters are going down, 
Not very, not very good. But you want to see the true price of fear and anxiety is we gave her a focused reading task after inducing fear and anxiety. Okay, the act of reading. Look what happened to those meters, right? Look how low they went. This was one second while the EEG machine did not pick up a single piece of amplitude from her prefrontal cortex because that's what stress, fear, and anxiety does. It restricts the blood flow out of important areas of your brain, makes you stupider. You know, it, 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 it decreases your ability to function. Okay, this is what we did. We gave her the active reading task. Again, another shot. You can see the attention meter, meditation meter, all this stuff decreased substantially. The true price of fear and anxiety. Okay, then we introduced the technology. We treated it with passive brain fitness. This is a, a little bit of what one of the videos looks like. After three seconds of that video starting, her brain waves started to return to normal. Forget waiting an hour, right? Three seconds, all the meters went up. Again, look at all these, all these the attention meter, meditation meter, zone meters. This happened almost instantly. This is a 10-minute passive brain fitness video. Then we gave her the active reading test. Look at that. Okay, look how good that is. She couldn't do any of that after fear and anxiety, but after we treated the fear and anxiety, amazing results. So what does this mean for you and I? What's possible? Well, listen, I'm going to tell you right now that I... I don't guarantee that this technology works perfectly for everybody, every single person, all the time, this beautifully. Not yet, anyway. We're getting really close. But I, do, I will tell you this. Every single person, the, well, I'll say the vast majority of people that use this technology will experience a positive shift in the way they think and feel the very first time they use it. And as they continue to use it, those positive results become more profound over time. So where's this going in the future? I believe as we get more research and more understanding of the implications of how electricity moves in the brain, the implications of how blood flow moves in the brain, we're going to create some permanent solutions for chronic stress, fear, anxiety, and depression. I can already remove symptoms of ADHD, and I can already induce uh, stress relief right now, but I'm talking about permanent solutions. I believe we're about two years away from that. Okay, more research, a little bit more time, I think what we're going to do is we're going to be able to prevent and even cure degenerative disease simply by manipulating the electrical flow and the blood flow in the brain using a technology that is virtually harmless as long as people don't have any risk factors for epilepsy. So I hope that you stay tuned because I really believe this technology is going to change the world and how we treat many of life's most nagging issues. Thank you so much for your time today.